Hey guys and welcome to JTech WP. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to move a WordPress website using a plugin called Duplicator. I'm upgrading a website so what I've done is I've built a brand new site on my demo server and I'm going to update the old website with the brand new one. I'm going to cover step by step how to use Duplicator so we can back up the brand new site and then we're going to erase the old site, create a new database and import the new one. Having good hosting does make this process a lot easier. I'm with Crystal in the UK which runs on Lightspeed so I'll put a link in the description below if you're after some really good hosting and top A grade service. If you have any issues with the site move just leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. This is the old website, looks pretty dated and tired and this is the new one that I'm going to be replacing it with. First thing you want to do is on your new website, so this is the one that's on your demo server, just go to plugins, add new, In the search bar up here, we're going to search for Duplicator. And over here, we've got the Duplicator WordPress migration plugin. And you can see it's got lots of good reviews. It's the one I use all the time. Press install now. Activate. Now we go to Duplicator, Packages. All right, so we're in their menu system. And all you want to do is go over to the right hand side and go Create New. You can name it whatever you want. It's uh, named on date and time order, so I'm going to leave it as it is. Press next, and it's going to run some tests. All right, so you're looking to make sure everything's good. Just read this notice, press yes, and then you want to press build. All right, so that's great. The package is completed. So we've got our installer file and we've got our archive, which has got the website files in it. I prefer to download the installer and the archive separately. We can see there, there's our installer downloading, which is a PHP file. Then download your archive file. These are basically the WordPress files, like the folders and all the images and everything like that. It's got a handy little guide down here on how to do each one. All right, there we go, there's our two files. So that's the backup part complete. All right, so I'm on the old site. This is the domain that I want the brand new site to appear on. So we need to go into the C panel. So we're in the C panel of the live site. So it's this one, this is the old one that we're gonna be deleting. I go to file manager. You're looking for public underscore HTML. Double click this. And then we wanna select all of these files apart from the CGI bin. So select those, but make sure you unselect CGI bin. I highly recommend you back up your old site before you delete anything, just in case anything goes wrong. But I'm just gonna go straight in and hit the delete. Skip the trash and delete the files. This is gonna basically erase the old site. All right, so that's our old site gone. We should be able to check it here and we shouldn't see anything. There we go, so our old site is now deleted. Now what we wanna do is press upload and you need to find where you put your files. So mine are in the downloads folder, so I'm gonna upload the installer file, which will take a couple of seconds. Then I'm gonna upload the main file with all the, the folders and the WordPress stuff in it. Press that one. While this is uploading, we need to delete the database. To delete the database, go back to your cPanel and make sure you open the database here. Then we need to go to MySQL databases. What we're gonna do is delete the old database. So to do that, just press delete. Are you sure? Yes, permanently delete, go back. And then we just want to delete the database user as we're going to create a new one. So scroll to the bottom, delete that, delete user. And this is where it's quite handy to have a notepad on screen because we're going to create a new database and you're going to need the information. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and create a new database. You can call it whatever you want. So you can put in a database name in this column here, press create database. So it'll tell you it's added database. I would copy this and paste it into my notepad file. 
Then we want to get, press go back. Scroll down to the bottom. We now need to add a user and a password. And I'm going to use the password generator. Advanced options, I like to have 18. Generate the password. Copy the password. Tick I have copied the password in a safe place. Press use password. And then you want to press create user. Go back. Now we need to scroll down, add user to database. So there's our user, there's our database. Press add. And then you want to check all privileges. Make sure they're all ticked. Make changes. All right, so we've got a success message here. So if I go back to our databases, we can now see there's our database and there's our user. So those two are connected. So we're done in there. Both of our files have uploaded, so we can now run the installer. We've now gone to the live website and you want to type in forward slash installer.php. And then you'll be greeted with this screen. So overview, we can see that's a pass, options, validation. I've read and accept all the terms and conditions. Press next. So what it's doing, it's looking for the files. This may take a few moments. All right, so all we need to do now is fill in our database name, our username and our database password. So I'm going to fill those in now. Once you've filled it in, press test database and it should all go green. So that's passed, that's good. Press next. And it says, do you want to run the installer with these settings? Press OK. So it's now installing the database and it's going to extract the files. Okay, so this is looking good. It's got our new site title, the URLs there. It's in the correct directory. If you need to add a new username or login, we can do that here. I know what my username and password is, so I don't need to do that. But if you did need to add a new admin to it, you could do that right now. Press next. Okay, so it's all good. Now it says delete the installer files after login. Recommended, yes, we want to do that. Now we want to log into our admin. All right, so our WordPress is up. I'm just going to check the front end of the site as well. So our new site is now on the live server. So as I've logged into the site, we can see now all the installer files have been removed. So we should have a clean install and we're good to go. Just remember, if you have updated the site, it is worth checking that all your Google Analytics codes connected and all your sitemaps are correct. And then you just want to go back to the old site and delete the old one off your demo server. Okay, everything's come across okay. Say, for example, this image wasn't here. How do we fix that? You could go to Elementor Tools. You could run a regenerate files and data and also resync the library. That's one way to fix it if you've got any missing images. And also there's a tool called Replace URL. Another way you could do it is put your demo site URL in here. And then you can put your live website URL in here and replace URL and that should fix any image issues. Once you finish everything, always remember to delete the demo site because you don't want the client updating the demo site. I use uh, Soft Oculus to do mine, so I'm going to go into Soft Oculus Manager. Find the site, expand it. Then all I'm going to do is go remove. And that's going to get rid of the demo site for us. Remove directory, remove database, remove database user, remove installation. It's just cleaning up after yourself, really. Good bit of housekeeping. And also, it's a good time to email the client and let them know that their new site's now live and they should be updating the live one and not the old one. If you found this video helpful, please smash that like button and hit that subscribe. Leave a comment below. And if you didn't like it, smash that dislike twice. And I'll see you on the next one.